Corn School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Amazon Pro Herbicide and Pride Seeds. Bernard Tobin here on the Corn School. Today I'm uh, joined by Rob Miller from BASF. Uh, we're at the Mary Hill Research Station. Hey Rob, how's it going? Pretty good, Bern. How are you doing? I'm doing all right. I'm doing all right. All right. Uh, you know, spring started with some really cool weather. Now we're getting, you know, some heat. But all along, it's been really dry. And it's allowed growers to get, you know, soil applied, pre-emergent herbicide down. But, you know, is that becoming a challenge now, Rob, as, you, as we get into this heat? Yes, we've been getting that question a lot lately, and, and we st still see a lot of value in using that soil applied residual herbicide, especially from a weed management perspective, because you can actually st still get up to 80% weed control of those, of those emerging weeds, and it's actually a really good resistance management strategy. Yeah. Talk about, Rob, uh, you know, activation here. Uh, as again, hot and dry. How do we activate herbicides, and you know, how do we make sure we get that uh, residual that we need? Well, most herbicides are actually broken down by soil microbes. There are some exceptions, um, but most of them are broken down by soil mi microbes. And in order for the microbes to break down that herbicide, you need warm soil and moist soil. So since the soil is still pretty dry, there's very limited amount of soil uh, breakdown or soil micro breakdown of those herbicides. So that herbicide is still going to be there. It's still going to remain active. And once the rain does come, it it still will initiate and, and activate those flushing weeds that come in later in the season. Now, how much rain, Rob? How much do we need to, you know, to activate a herbicide and really get it rolling? Well, it depends on the actual active ingredient. So some herbicides such as Zidua SC or Prowl H2O actually require more moisture for activation. So they actually work a little bit better when you get three quarters of an inch or more. Uh, other herbicides like Frontier Max or Pursuit require less moisture for activation because they're a little bit more water soluble in the soil. So you can probably get away with a four to five tenths worth of rainfall in one event. So we're not looking at a tenth here and a tenth there. We need that rainfall event to occur in one event to get more consistent control and actually control a lot of those flushing weeds. If the herbicide didn't get activated, what does the grower do if they haven't escaped? Well, any of the weeds that actually have germinated, germinated from some depth. So they've, they've coming down from, they're coming up from two or three inches down. So they're gonna be very difficult to control, especially if they get too big. So that's where if you do have an escape because of low activation, that's where you wanna come in earlier with your post-emerge application. So you might be used to going in at say five, six leaf corn. You might have to come in at, at one to two leaf stage corn in order to control these, these weeds. We wanna control them when they're smaller and actively growing because if it remains dry, it's gonna be really difficult to control these weeds because they are so big and they are, have hardened off with the, with the hot, humid conditions. So Rob, you mentioned that you know, pre-emerge can, even in a tough situation like this, you can get 80% control. How does that set you up for your post program? It actually decreases the selection pressure of your post-emerge herbicide. So there's fewer weeds that are there for, and you put less reliance on that in-crop herbicide. And you also get, can incorporate additional effective modes of action, whether it's pre-emerge or early post-emerge, more so than uh, just relying on a total post program later in the season. So Rob, you've got pre-emergence down here. Um, you've got multiple modes of action. That's got to help you out from a resistance management perspective, right? Definitely, and using a soil applied residual herbicide can set you up for better success with that post program and not relying only on those post-emerge programs like glyphosate to control some of these problem weeds. And we're not just only talking about glyphosate resistant common water hemp, we're also looking at something like common lambs quarters or even common ragweed, which tend to be more problem weeds, especially in these dry years. So Rob, it's dry. May 18th, hot. Um, hey, what's the message for growers here? Stay the course, stick with your pre-emerged soil applied herbicides? Stay the course, manage the crop, not the weather. And we're not only looking at controlling weeds this year, but we're also looking at this as an integrated pest management approach and integrated weed management approach for other years. So we're not, so that's where we're looking at controlling these problem weeds, especially in, in a crop like corn, setting yourself up for success in your soybeans and your wheat the following year. Well, great stuff, Rob. Hey, uh, thanks for the, taking the time. We'll catch you up with you later in the season. Thanks for having me.